Welcome to another edition of Action 14. I'm Mike Briggs, and with me to start it all out is Superintendent of Plymouth School District, Dan Mello. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mike. It's been uh, a crazy couple months, but we're still active here at Plymouth School District. We are still moving forward. Our kids are uh, experiencing education and activities a little differently. Yes. But we're still doing it, so right. uh, I'm super pleased that we're in this position. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about education under these, uh, all of this a little bit later. But let's start out by uh, talking about a couple graduates that uh, got uh, awarded from the uh, FFA. Right, uh, so last year we had two graduates, uh, Dallas Creesa and Anna Seifert, who uh, began a project. Uh, since the building of our Food Science and Ag Center, we've coordinated with some local companies, uh, but also our advanced biology and agriculture classes. And so the uh, students have had access to that facility to do experiments, which then can go on into the um, FFA national competition. Mm -hmm. So these two students, uh, Anna and Dallas, decided that they wanted to try to win nationals and bring something uh, by creating an experiment. And what their experiment was, they wanted to see if they could add more oxygen and improve the growing conditions in a hydroponic environment by adding hydrogen peroxide to water somewhere in the system. I'm not exactly sure where yes. it was, but somewhere in the system. And so they began that last uh, fall, uh, continued it through winter, created the laboratory conditions and the testing protocols, and ultimately uh, made some discoveries about how hydrogen peroxide affected lettuce plants in a hy hydroponic system. So they took their experiment and then typically a lot of these things are, they're brought to Nash the, the state level and then there's a display and competitions. Right. Well, of course, everything else is different this year So and last year, so uh, it all had to be virtual. And so they had to meet and explain virtually. They had to, instead of uh, show and tell, they had to write uh, to show, to, to get their experiment out there. Uh, different experiment, uh, experience, but uh, great results because ultimately they won the state competition mm -hmm. with that experiment. Right. And then they went on to the national level and they took second nationally mm -hmm. with that experiment. And so they both won a scholarship. Uh, they both got the notoriety. Uh, they're getting wow. their scholarship and they're both in college now um, right. and, and, and graduates, but they're still kind of hooked to Plymouth. And mm -hmm. so the fact that our school is yeah. set the situation for those two girls to succeed and some Tracy Heinbuck, their advisor and teacher, did a great job and thank you to the community for the facilities that right. enable us to do this. It, there's no way we could have done this without that uh, Food Science and Ag Center and so sometimes these things just come together and I'm just really happy that the girls got that experience. And what was kind of neat is that they're in college right now but they connected up to the school board. Right, yeah, we, they're, they, Everything's virtual, so the school board meeting is a few people here, and then they're on the screen virtually, and one of our school board members is virtual, and but somehow it all ends up working, and right. they were the board was able to ask them questions, mm -hmm. and uh, they were able to respond, and it was I mean it was like everything else, different, but uh, but it worked. Yeah, yeah. Well, moving on, uh, we had a legislative update. Yeah. Uh, in our county, the superintendents of all the school districts within the county get together on a monthly basis with our state legislators. Mm -hmm. And we've, that's been going on uh, since Paul Ryan started it a number of years back uh, in this format. And so what ended up happening or happens is we get together, we bring up issues, we advocate for educational uh, uh, ideas, they ask us our input, we ask them their input, we kind of work together so that we just hope that they're informed about the things that we're uh, caring about and they hope the same about the things that they're working on. So it's a good working relationship. And now we have two of the people of our local legislators, uh, uh, Tyler Vorpagel, who is a graduate right. of Plymouth High School, is now in a leadership, leadership position in the assembly. 
And Devin Lemahieu, who is a state senator, is the uh, majority leader mm -hmm. in the state senate. And so we've got, in Sheboygan County, um, we've got some very high-ranking members of the, the state legislature. They're in our meetings on a regular basis, and so it's, I, I think it bodes well for us to be able to have you know, some, uh, some really good discussions and hopefully mm -hmm. uh, some influence with uh, the decisions that they make uh, at the state legislature. So right. uh, congratulations to them and you know, our former graduate, Tyler, yep. uh, but also uh, we're looking forward to continuing to work with them. Now, the academic pillar uh, came up and mm -hmm. making some changes or updates. Right, uh, we have a three-year strategic plan. Uh, we've, we've got the four pillars of excellence in the school district, and the academic pillar relates to everything that happens within the school walls for learning. And so we're making some uh, updates to the future states. Mm -hmm. The future states are the big overarching goals that we're, that we're shooting towards, and the, that, that's kind of where the board lives. They want to, they, you know, they have the, they, they'd like to set those goals as uh, for us and as the school uh, personnel, and then we figure out the details, right. like how to get there, what to do, how to measure what we're doing. And so uh, a couple of the new ones, uh, one in particular that is of interest is a more of a, a service-oriented future state that we want all students in the Plymouth School District to use their time and talents to serve and uh, with, in the community. Right. So that will ultimately, as we take it back now and, and work on it as uh, district personnel, uh, we have to actualize that. We have to turn that into action. So um, that it could be everything from our NHS already has service hours requirements, mm -hmm. but maybe now some of our uh, athletic or co-curricular teams have some service that they do in the com community. And if they had service that they were already doing, maybe it's more. So what we're trying to do is to uh, add some future states in our academic pillar that are uh, beyond the three R's, or the four R's, <laughs> Whatever yep. they are, okay. are, are, yeah. uh, to you know that more well-rounded total um, citizen, mm -hmm. and so some of those things are coming down the pike. And that's interesting that we want our students to to be a service to the community, not only when they're in school, but teach them that once they get out of school, they also become a service to the community that they live in. Right, right. No matter where they end up living. Right. Hopefully they stay, they stay here and live here and make their lives here. Uh, but it's, you know, that working in your community mm -hmm. and being a positive impact in your community is not just good for the community, it's also rewarding for individuals. Right. I think sometimes we have to lead people to see how that mm -hmm. is personally rewarding. Right. Now, we have a distance here, um, social distancing, and social distancing has been working in the schools, uh, but there was an update to education through all of this last night. Right, right, right. Uh, we've been having regular COVID slash education program mm -hmm. updates to the school board. Parents out there know that there have, uh, because we send letters home in every case when there is a, a positive case of COVID, in the school buildings um, that, of course, in our buildings, we've had COVID cases, we've had students that are COVID positive and staff that are COVID positive, and we've had close contacts in those places. But our intent is that we're using our local data, our nurses track every single day. Mm -hmm. If there is a person with symptoms or a parent at home with symptoms or any of those cases where somebody needs to be pulled from the population and quarantined to home for 14 days. We track all that, we know who they are, we talk to the parents and, and the students. Uh, and so the idea is we're trying to continue the program but make targeted data-based decisions on intervening if we have to. Uh, so far, we've actually flipped three classrooms full of kids right. to, ver to uh, remote learning for a period of 14 days, right. uh, and I was just over at uh, uh, at uh, Riverview this afternoon, 
one group of kids has just, just, come got, back. just came back. I was talking to them and kind of discussing their experiences while on their 14 day quarantine and obviously their teacher was quarantined at the same time. So um, they're happy to be back Yes, in school. They really and, are. And quite honestly, the parents are happy that they're back also because <laughs> education right. happens in the building. Right, right. You know, we've been um, experiencing all different kinds of ways that technology can certainly help at home, but it doesn't really take the place of being in the classroom. Right, research continues to show that uh, in-person learning is superior in, in the aggregate, in total, um, compared to complete virtual. Now we've got a lot of different versions of, oh. we've got hybrid, we've got some kids in, some kids out, we've got short periods of students out and in, um, but one of the things that that came up that our uh, director of curriculum, Dina Bedrecki, talked about was in order for us to be able to do these hybrid models where we've got in-person learning and we're working on this subject, uh, tomorrow you might be at home. Right. So we need to be able to go between the virtual format and the paper and pencil format. And so our teachers have been working super hard oh. and our tech department has been working super <laughs> hard to try to support all of the different applications, mm -hmm. uh, both in making them work technically, but then also understanding how to use them as a teacher uh, in, in methodologically. And so then how do we get that all to work? So it happens every day in the classroom, even when they're here, they're working in a in a, on a format, instead of using paper and pencil, maybe they're writing it on their computer screen right. and because th they could be quarantined tomorrow. Right. And so all of these learning experiences are uh, stretching our patience, <laughs> but it's, it, it's uh, people are learning a lot and sometimes that can be invigorating. Now, we, we could not have done what we're doing today three years ago. No. Things have changed in technology that really is helpful and making this possible. To have a teacher teaching here at the high school, they may have 12, half of their class in front of them in the classroom, and the other half at home watching them and listening on their laptops. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher is, is, is teaching to maybe a dozen or 15, keeping their six foot distance in the classroom. And at the same time on the, on the board behind them is a screen showing all of the students checking in from home, mm -hmm. watching it from home. Right, and it, and then the next day it will be the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, the the students that were in the classroom will be at home, mm -hmm. and we had one different flavor that we're working on this week where the teacher is quarantined, teaching the class in school, in the classroom, and the students that are home. She's doing it from her home. Right, and then. Uh, we have a substitute watching the class, but nevertheless, the teacher is teaching both of those groups from home on her laptop with a speaker, with a microphone, uh, with a camera, mm -hmm. and um, all of those things are changing daily. Right, and you're right. This, the capability to do this, uh, had this struck three years ago, yeah. wouldn't have been nearly as good uh, if even possible, right? And so I just keep thinking, if you know, as as we look forward in into next year and years after, how much of this and what types of value are we going to be able to take from this to be able to better educate kids right. in future years? I like, think I think we're going to learn some very valuable things uh, during this crisis, if you will, that will assist us in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Not exactly sure which parts are going to rise to the top, right. but I know some are for sure. But understand, it is very stressful on our staff. It is. To be able to, you're talking to, to students at home, looking on the screen, making answering their questions um, mm -hmm. over the internet, and then you also have the questions of the students in your class. Keep We take role. Mm -hmm. We know who's in class, who's not. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's stressful on our staff, and they're yep. they're holding up very well. They are, and they're they're doing a phenomenal job. And and it, 
like at the elementary school, they're, they're not an A-B day schedule, but they still might have two kids who have a cold. Yeah. And so please parents, if you have those symptoms, keep the kids home, that's right. exactly what we want. But it does increase the stress for the teacher because yep. we still are teaching. Mm -hmm. And if they've got kids at home for a few days, maybe the parents are quarantining, we still are having to reach students and we might not have known they were gonna be home and now they're home today. Right. And so we've gotta keep them moving. And so all of the, uh, all of the change mm -hmm. it can, be, can be stressful. Right. Um, but it's certainly teaching us a lot. Right. Now, getting to some, away from that a little bit, let's talk about uh, some things that have happened now. Sure. The, the winter, uh, fall sports has ended. Right. We just finished the last fall sport. Football ended last uh, fr uh, Friday. Friday. And uh, so that completed our fall season. Now, if you uh, remember having this meeting or this, this uh, talking to you about whether or not we were going to have sports mm -hmm. uh, in summer and right. uh, what would it look like? What, what about activities? What about the band? What about mm -hmm. the, uh, how are we going to do choir and all of these things? So I'm happy to report that we've had a full fall season. Right abbreviated in some cases. We did have some quarantines that happened along the way. We had some bumps in the road. Uh, we did have uh, choir events. We did have a band event. Uh, we did have a uh, one act play. Now there are, everything was different, mm -hmm. but still kids, I'm, and I'm really happy for the senior kids. Right. Because in summertime, we weren't sure that anything was gonna be able to, to happen. And although it was different and in some cases shorter or abbreviated, the kids still had an experience. Mm -hmm. And I'll just give the example of the, the uh, 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 what was it, Pink, uh, it's Revolution by Pink Zebra yep. that the choir did. Mm -hmm. And they made a music video where every single kid, and it was, it looked like a hundred of them, right. where they all sang their individual parts and recorded their individual parts it was completely dubbed together into a one choir song. Mm -hmm. And then they did a huge music video using drones and out on the football field. Right. And so the kids created a music video which was published on our, uh, on our website and is on YouTube that we've never done before. Right. So yeah, they didn't get to do the, the, the typical concert, mm -hmm. but now these kids have a a really cool YouTube video of them creating a you know a, a, a dubbed song that that no other classes had had the chance to experience so different yes but still pretty cool mm -hmm. now we did have a, a stage production right we had a, again a special one with some virtual there also well, correct uh, our COVID diaries mm -hmm. were our one act play or our fall play mm -hmm. it was completely virtual uh, and it was also because of its nature uh, much more produced by the kids right. this year than in any year prior mm -hmm. so um, keep that in mind as you're watching mm -hmm. but the fact that they created it instead of you know getting all the scripts themselves uh, from you know other sources, having to create those scripts and and do the acting and, and direct those performances, I think maybe they even take more out of that maybe. than they would have before. Looks a lot different, yeah, uh, but it's still a production of a uh, of art, and I think you know that's. Uh, that's always impactful for them. There's something they're, they're always going to remember. Now, uh, athletics, uh, we should mention that the football team won the conference. Yep. Second year in a row. Yep. Um, and all of that. Uh, and uh, we had to limit a number of people that could go to football games. They had every student, in general, every, every player got four tickets. Correct. For football, uh, in volleyball, every player got two tickets. Because one was outdoors, you got more tickets. Yeah. One was indoors, you got less. And with swimming, no tickets. Correct. And so, uh, TV14, we set everything out live. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we had two swimming events. One was the uh, regionals, the uh, swimming, went out live over YouTube. And uh, all the volleyball, home volleyball went out live. And 
for the first time ever, every football game went out live, even the away games. Right. We took a laptop and a, and a hotspot with us and sent it out live over YouTube, and we, unbelievable number of people watching. And I think I said this last month, you're probably going to be getting a call from Monday Night Football pretty soon, I'm guessing. <laughs> for the, they're always looking for, the, for yeah. the new Dandy Don. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I won't go that far, but we did have more than 5,000 connections. There could be one person, there could be five people connecting up at, on their laptop or on their Roku TV, let's say, uh, from everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan, Iowa, tuning in and watching the Panthers play uh, in volleyball, swimming, or football. It yeah. was really kind of neat. See? From crisis intervention, mm -hmm. right? Yep, that's what we've been doing, mm -hmm. and uh, and now we're just a uh, just a couple weeks away from the winter sports starting up. Right, as we're talking right now, the girls are practicing in the gym. Yep. Uh, and uh, it, again, it will be different. We'll have limited fans. Uh, there could be a time where we get to where there are no fans, but we can still broadcast, as you were just yep. saying. We can still get the games out to people. And we have uh, uh, the students, it's required, it's a mask mandate, the, the kids mm -hmm. playing the sports have to wear a mask. So all of those things are happening, and, uh, but the kids are still getting an experience. Right. And so hopefully we can uh, make it through the, these winter seasons as right. well. I, I think December 1st is possibly the first uh, girls basketball game home. I believe so. I, it, it, that may have just been canceled. Because well, we, we had one that was going to be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. That mm -hmm. was canceled. Okay, that was the girls people. basketball with Sheboygan Falls. Right. That, that is not going to happen. And so it's been a... I'll have to have uh, Dan Knausen next month That's a good on idea. TV because he has just been scrambling to fill this in. Mm -hmm. If somebody will not be playing us, can we fill it with somebody else? Right. And uh, he did it in football and he did it, we had a late volleyball game mm -hmm. and uh, we'll be doing, we'll see this happen during the winter sports too. And we certainly will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I certainly want to thank you for being on. Thanks for uh, having me. Hopefully uh, when we come back in December, we'll have more good news about how the Plymouth School District is hanging in there and surviving all of this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes, hope so. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, thank you. When we come back, I'm going to have Donna Hahn here talking about the Arts Center and all the different things happening and getting us ready for the cheese drop on New Year's Eve. So stay right with us. You're watching Action 14. Welcome back to Action 14. As promised, I have Donna Hahn here, the boss of the Arts Center. Thank Welcome you, Welcome to the show. Thank you. Before we start, I, I want to compliment you and also compliment whoever was the writer of uh, an article that made the Plymouth Review, the insert section of the review, yes. about your 20 years on board with the Arts Center. Yes, uh, it was a collaborative effort, so yeah, it was <laughs> nice that they printed that. Yeah, uh, I asked you before uh, we started here that the Arts Center has been open 28 years. It's going on 28 years for our membership. So we'll, we you know, started in 93, so we started mm -hmm. accepting memberships at that time. But the first two years, you know, it was planning and right. getting organized. Mm -hmm. so. And then uh, in 1999, 1999, you uh, volunteered a bit and right. then uh, got hired on to... Mm -hmm. uh, be part of the show. Right. Well, I started volunteering with Paul Brandel mm -hmm. and Freddie Nordyke at that right. time and Margaret Whitcup. You know, mm -hmm. the three of us kind of put our heads together and uh, the four of us actually and uh, came up with a couple shows. The first one being Broadway Review mm -hmm. and it was a huge hit and we're always grateful to Freddie and Margaret for, you know, spearheading the performing right. arts. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, and then here we are 20 years later, mm -hmm. uh, and you're still enjoying it, I hope. Oh, absolutely. Every it, day. It's uh, busier than it's ever been. Yes, even in these challenging days, it's still fun, mm -hmm. and we're still you know, going ahead offering either virtual events or in-person events, so mm -hmm. we're, we're doing the best we can. Well, let's talk about something that's been happening for 25 years. That's where your members are able to bring art and put it on display. Right. That's your 25th annual holiday membership. 
right. uh, exhibit. Mm -hmm. Well, and the opening reception for that is going to be on Friday, December 4th from 4.30 to 7. We're going to have live music by Mary Fellens and Andrew Krieger. So it'll be a, a celebration of our membership. Although we're not going to do the uh, usual awards ceremony, we're going to uh, distribute the awards ahead of time, announce those ahead of time, and then just kind of have a, a nice casual evening where people can drop in and mm -hmm. we'll have a cash bar and uh, you know a cheese table we'll give away of free course. cheese we always have free cheese yes and thanks to the sartori company and sargento so um you know it'll be a little bit different but it'll still be a festive night to yeah. celebrate our and that members. is again that is december december 4th from 4 30 to 7. right and then uh that display will be up until January 15th. Correct. And uh, we have at least, I'm going to say, 75 of our members that are displaying yeah, yeah. work this year, which is wonderful That's because, unbelievable. you know, in this time frame, you know, it's, mm -hmm. we were kind of worried that maybe it would drop down to like 40 or 50, but 75 is a great number. We're going to fill the gallery. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. important for our viewers to understand is that many of the items may be available. They most likely all of them will be up mm -hmm. for sale. And uh, you know, if the artist does sell a piece, we're, we're uh, welcoming them to bring another piece in if someone wants to take that piece and take it home for the holidays and you mm -hmm. know, give it as a gift. Uh, we're gonna allow that this year. And the reason I bring it up is that ex exactly what you said there, because December 4th, um, Buying something for somebody that uh, they will cherish. Mm -hmm. A local artist giving, uh, being able to be hanging in your living room. You or know? even a piece of jewelry yes. or a sculpture piece or a scarf. Yeah, yeah I, I, was, I wasn't being fair because it's not all drawing and paintings. Right, you do exactly. have a lot of oils and, and watercolors, mm -hmm. but yeah, jewelry is also yes. uh, all, all of the crafts that Leather we call art. Leather and wood, mm -hmm. glass, yeah. And you won't know what they have unless you come down to the come gallery. Down. Yes, absolutely. Come yeah, down. and so uh, give us the gallery hours because if I, if I can't make the 4.30 to 7 on Friday the 4th. We're, we're open every week, um, every day except Monday. So it's Tuesday through Friday from 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. And then on the weekends, uh, Saturday and Sunday, noon to three. Mm -hmm. But we would also open, you know, for a special occasion, you know, we'll open the gallery. You know, if you have a group coming in from mm -hmm. Milwaukee or, Certainly. you know, you can't get there during our open hours, we will absolutely, uh, you know, accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Because you want to see our local artist. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, a little town the size of Plymouth and a surrounding area. Yes. And 75 members mm -hmm. have art in the show yes. down in downtown yeah. Plymouth. Right. And uh, the show is sponsored this year by Paul and Kathy Sartori. And then our season sponsors are Masters Gallery, Sargento, and the Sartori Company, and then 98.5 FM radio station. Mm -hmm. And we do appreciate the sponsorship. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Now you have another item that is going to you are offering to send home uh, at no cost. We have a complimentary. Yeah. Uh, it's called Take Then Make mm -hmm. ornament, and our education coordinator has put together three uh, kits, uh, little ornament kits, and uh, one is a little, you know simpler mm -hmm. so it could be for you know younger children and then there's a little bit more difficult one and then there's one that's f maybe for older children and adults mm -hmm. and we're asking folks to just register they can go on our website and go through ticket leap and register they're they're free and it's our little gift to the community and uh, we're going to take those registrations right up until the first of December and then uh, you can come and pick up your free ornaments on the 4th or the 5th. Okay, all, all good to the community. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's something nice you can do with the family, uh, you know, pick a night and just do a little mm -hmm. craft. Uh, and you can get as many as you like, you know, everybody in the family can make one. That's great, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But let's now talk about New Year's Eve. It's coming up. 
it it's is. It's hard to believe it's uh, it's just around the corner because yes. the cheese drop, regardless of the problems we're having with the virus, et cetera, the cheese drop is going to happen. We are certainly planning on that. Yes. It's going to be, again, a little different this year. Mm -hmm. We won't have the music and the party inside, but we're definitely going to have festivities outside with the bonfires and hot chocolate and hot cider. And we'll get ready about 8.30, 8.45, and we'll party outside, and then we'll drop the big cheese at 10 o'clock At, at again. 10 o'clock. Yes, yes. And, and then we're going to call it an evening. Mm -hmm. So come and join us. But. Uh, <laughs> Sartori again will have a gift bag yes. available to the first 250 people. Yes, yes, and we'll have plenty to go around. Yes. So the first 250 families that arrive will uh, be, you know, getting a gift bag from Sartori Company, and they are a major sponsor for mm -hmm. this event. And then you still will have the bonfires, you still have the firemen down there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the cheese drop will happen at 10 p.m. 10 o'clock, yes. That works out so much better for the sleepy I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to stay up till midnight now. Well, families <laughs> like to bring the children yes. and uh, bring your noisemakers and, mm -hmm. you know, let's just ring in a great new year because this 2020 has been tough. <laughs> it's been tough. <laughs> yes, it has. To say the least. Yes. But uh, we want to have a nice crowd down there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep our distance, but uh, and that's why we're yes. staying outside. And we're going to wear masks, yeah. even though we're going to be outside. But, you know, it's probably going to be cold anyway, it so, will be. you yeah. know, a mask will help with the cold and with the, the virus. So. so make plans to, it's from 8.30 to 10, down at, uh, at, the, at the clock. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, we do have one other event that I'd mm -hmm. like to talk a little bit about. Uh, we're going to make, um, it's a centerpiece, or you could actually put it on your porch, and uh, we're going to take live and artificial stems and put them in a box, and every, all the supplies are going to be included. And this is uh, with our local teacher, Alexis Harden, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to do this at the Art Center in person. So we invite you to register for that. That's going to be uh, on December 5th. And I'm, I was a little hesitant because I was trying to get the name and put the name with what's happening, bows and booze. Bows and, <laughs> Bows booze. and booze. It's a takeoff <laughs> on wine and paint night, except that we're not going to be painting, yeah. we're going to be stuffing branches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it'll be a beautiful centerpiece for you when you're all finished. You, you'll be very proud of mm -hmm. your creation. And, uh, you know, come down and, and join us for that. Obviously, you can call down uh, to the Art Center at 892-8409. Uh, 892-8409. Mm -hmm. uh, you can register online, uh, PlymouthArts.org. That's right. But my advice is stop down. Stop mm -hmm. down and visit. See some of the great, uh, particularly after the 4th, and see some of the great artists that we have mm -hmm. in our community. We always have an art show going on. Uh, in between shows, there are a few days where we don't, but there's always the gift shop. Mm -hmm. uh, that you know We have beautiful items in the gift shop, and you know I'm sure that any one of the pieces in there would be, you know, look very lovely in your home. So please do stop in and right. take a look. It's always, it's easy to call, it's easy to go online, but it would be more fun to stop in and see what's available mm -hmm. uh, this time of year when you need a gift for someone special. Right, right. Yes. Well, I want to thank you for being on. I, I know the holidays are going to catch up with us, and uh, you're going to be busier than busy. We are. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's always good, too. Right. Yes. Thank you very much for Yes, thank the you. Now, I have the mayor in town now, so we're going to take a short break, and when you come back, uh, I'm going to have Mayor Pullman here to talk about what's happening with the city of Plymouth during these troubling times. Stay right with us. You're watching Action 14. Welcome back to Action 14. As promised, I have Mayor Pullman here on the show. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome, Mike. It's always a pleasure to be on uh, TV 14 and uh, talk with you and our viewers and tell them what's going on around the city. We've got some good news, I think, when we talk about budget time. The city budget, to all of our viewers, you have some good news to spread there, I think. Don't you? 
Absolutely. Okay. That's that's the good short answer. Yes, we're balanced. We did yep. borrow. We uh, have been able to maintain our services mm -hmm. with the dedication of our employees, their uh, willingness to alternate hours, some morning, some afternoon, some at home, and it's really been a challenge, but one that we've come, I, I think, through the best we can mm -hmm. under the circumstances that we're all uh, facing with with this COVID, we're sick and tired of it. But you know, we're doing what we have to do to uh, keep everything running, and I I think that uh, everyone will be happy uh, when it's over. Eventually, it it has to end. We know that, but certainly, as crazy as it's been, we're we're very fortunate to have uh, the staff we do and. And that's the nice thing about local people working for the community. Mm -hmm. They really uh, put their heart and soul into it. Now, I can compliment the, the city on the gathering of leaves this year. They, they, in my neighborhood, in my neighborhood, the leaves have been uh, cleaned up nicely often by your, your staff. I know you, you they're working different hours, different time frames, but uh, I'm very pleased. Well, thank you, and, and that's nice to hear. I, I think it's maybe a coincidence of what our staff is doing at different times, and I think we're doing like leaf collecting at different hours that doesn't uh, collide with other things. And um, of course we have some new equipment which also makes it uh, very accommodating, but we feel that the mixture and and who knows once this is over, we might keep some of that mixture because it does take our staff and put it at prioritizing certain things and mm -hmm. certainly leaf collection is one because if we don't, we run into problems with snow plowing. Right. So uh, th that's good to hear. Um, and knock on wood, maybe it's because we took down so many trees too. <laughs> we get Not as many leaves. <laughs> Not as many leaves. <laughs> but you can't tell that to the crew because no. the pile is still as big as it ever is. Right. But, uh, it, it, combination of events, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now uh, there's some mystery going on. I know you had a special meeting Monday and we're talking about uh, a new city manager. Brian Yurgis has been gone now for since, several months. Since May 1st. Since yeah. May 1st and uh, you, you're getting closer. Well, we are and, and once again you, you have very good sources of knowledge inside and, and I, I can confirm that uh, we did finish our fourth interview for a city administrator and the council has made a selection that uh, we've forwarded to our HR director and our recruiter mm -hmm. uh, that we hired and they'll be working with our city attorney to put together an employment contract for uh, eventual council approval. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that that will come forward on the 24th next week. That's a little too quick for contracts mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing because this position, although it's an employee position, it's, it's what we call an at-will position. And that means that we can hire and fire um, according to the terms of the contract and of course that person can leave according to the terms of the contract. So uh, we're hoping to have that contract in place. If everything works out, we can maybe get it approved on the December 8th agenda and that would put the individual on board sometime in January of 2021. Okay. And, um, it, it, it's a necessary position in the city as, as Brian has proved to us over and over. There's a lot of talent in that position that, that we've taken advantage of 
over the last 10 years, and it, it wouldn't be uh, fair to not uh, tell our department heads, and especially our interim director, <laughs> Kathy Austin, who has been doing double and triple duty yes. for uh, since May 1st, and being in the budget cycle as a department head and then being in the budget cycle as the interim administrator, there's a lot of things that you have to learn on the job and pull together. And uh, she certainly did an admirable job in, in the interim. And uh, as circumstances were different for her, I, I think she would have applied for the job uh, but as they are, uh, she's very happy to be our uh, Department of Public Works uh, director and, and she's doing a fine job there. Uh, there's a lot of engineering that goes on constantly and, and her talents are very much appreciated there. But we, all of our staff saw the need to step up for additional input and then, of course, we had a couple retirements, which affected, again, the workload, and all of a sudden, it's a nice thing that we have uh, salary employees that work 45 hours, and sometimes it's 65 hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things that happens, and, and fortunately, we have a good staff in, in every department that just really worked hard at bringing this in. The, the council has given guidelines for many years and we we're able to adhere to those guidelines even under the extreme conditions that we have, keeping the budget in line and not tapping into our reserves, which is pretty admirable under the circumstances. And of course, getting some additional funding from the COVID CARES Fund that comes out mm -hmm. of Washington and Madison. So we've used those very uh, adequately as well. I, I think we're someplace, uh, maybe 50, 60,000 that we've had in additional revenue on reimbursement things, uh, such as laptops that a lot of the personnel have taken home and staggered working from home in certain areas. Obviously not everything you know, can be taken home, but it has given us uh, a shot in the arm to also pick up some IT areas mm -hmm. that uh, quite frankly, lockdown has forced us to do some things and because of the opportunity has helped us uh, grow that area of our workforce. It's been a tremendous two-way street. I think there's, we're seeing it here too in the school district. You're learning some things that may help you in the future. Well, and, and I guess all of us feel like we don't have to ask a third grader how to do some things <laughs> anymore because we've had to learn them and uh, it, it's been uh, a good experience all the way around uh, and and to that extent to get more training whether it's at the high school and the high school partners with Lakeshore Technical College or mm -hmm. anything else these are lifelong skills right. that are are going to be beneficial to the employee and ultimately to us as the employee. It has to be nice also the fact that uh, the numbers are looking good. Uh, at, you know, you being a number cruncher like I am, it's always fun when you can see that, that you're able to put the numbers down and you're gonna stay within and uh, even through these tough times. You, you take a deep breath when that happens and you really like, oh wow, that turned out pretty good because yep. you're shooting kind of in the unknown for mm -hmm. weeks and months. And here we are already to the middle of November and there's not much time left. And you look at what dollars are left in the budget and you keep hoping and hoping. And if the weather holds up for another couple of weeks, 
we'll right. be in good shape on mm -hmm. that end too. So. You've been, we've been blessed with weather this year. We know that because uh, we were pushing snow uh, in October last yep. year, last and, last and year the snow never left us. Snow. No, and it just got cold and icy, and mm -hmm. uh, so we're in we're in good shape. Uh, we don't want to, you know, say anything negative yet because mm -hmm. Mother Nature doesn't listen to us very often, yeah. and and uh, so we we have to just kind of. Uh, go at it with the best experience that we have and and our crews are are always very good about that they they have a lot of time under the belt and we've been able to update equipment to make their job that much more efficient too. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad that uh, we've had some nice weather so that uh, you aren't pushing snow right now you aren't doing that type of overtime on top of the other issues of, of staggering people in and out of your offices. We, we've had those debates of when we need snow uh, plowing done and we've got the equipment, then uh, obviously they're in a the truck alone, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you can't push that equipment to its ultimate and because something breaks mm -hmm. and and then you're up against the wall because mm -hmm. now you don't have uh, the manpower to replace it or to fix it and to still get out there. So we're, we're hoping that some of the staggering, uh, a couple of the men have really liked having flexible hours okay. that could be to our advantage come the snow time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to have to wait and see how that turns out. Um, one, one thing that I found out was that uh, we can get, we now, you've changed your website a bit and we can connect up 24-7 uh, with somebody nearly. It, it is. Uh, we've, because again of COVID, it's forced mm -hmm. us to do some things internally and in that process uh, our people have said well let's do this and just like TV 14 you've got different resources and places that you've put things and that has helped us give our audience a, a better uh, receptacle to go to for the information that sometimes in the past they would call City Hall and they wouldn't get an answer. Well, when you only have two people on board yeah. instead of three, it, it's hard to do. So we've put on our city website the, the quick answers about, you know, Halloween or mm -hmm. the Christmas uh, parade or different events that come up in the hours but we also have formatted a lot of our information, fill in forms that uh, they can go to and get information. And with some of the expansion in our computer technology that's been a result right. of COVID, you now were able to load up more information. Mm -hmm. And we were at first leery of well, are people going to use it? And we found out that they had more questions. So we actually did a further expansion of it. And I tried it myself a couple times, and I was a little clumsy a couple years ago. I actually tried it last week, and like that, I was there. It's good. like, oh, this is good. good. <laughs> so, and, and I didn't even have to uh, have someone look over my shoulder to do it. So I felt good about that, but that means uh, people are using it and we're seeing that as a result again of, of the COVID mm -hmm. and people going online instead of coming in. And we have the office covered, both the utilities and City Hall, both campuses, eight hours a day. But, you know, the election proved to be one of those smooth operating things because of the efficiency that we had and staggering hours and everything. I, I think it really 
gave us a, a shot in the arm of being comfortable and people are being comfortable with with that flexibility that they have as mm -hmm. well yeah I'm very pleased. I came through uh, downtown this morning and you have nearly all of the Christmas decorations up. It's beautiful downtown. Well, thank you. We're, we're trying to get that done this week because, uh, of course, next week is, is Thanksgiving and the parade and everything and there's a lot of changes going on. But we wanted to have the feeling of normalcy mm -hmm. if, if we can say that as much as possible and the downtown merchants have been terrific in trying to get their locations uh, ready for the same thing and that's where you know if people haven't visited the downtown stores uh, please do so right uh, every single one is being very proactive in working with the guidelines that come down from the state and the federal and the county and those change every week and and so we, we continually try to have those uh, parts of it updated and uh, we we need to support our mm -hmm. local merchants as much as possible uh, they've done a terrific job some of them surviving through this thing. We have a couple new ones that actually open, and it's very exciting to see the the patronage that's going on. And so we really are are hoping that people will do that. Uh, they're they've extended hours right. so that they're able to accommodate people when there isn't such a big crowd. Maybe some people are concerned about that, and I think on all of them, if you if you call them and say, you know, I like to come in, you know, at a different time. Uh, I was in one just last week, and the first answer was, uh, oh, yes, I'll, I'll accommodate you. And I've heard that from other store owners as well in talking with them and trying to help them through this process. So I, I think that they will definitely work with the customers right. and give them the service that they're asking for and the safeguards that mm -hmm. are required. That's right, please support our downtown merchants, uh, whether it's ordering takeout or purchasing those gifts for the special someone at home, uh, support the downtown Plymouth merchants because they are supporting this community also. Exactly, yes, yes. thank you. Well, I want to thank you for being on. You're welcome. And, it's uh, always appreciated to be here and, and visit with our viewers. Remember that the uh, council meetings are the second and last Tuesday of every month, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock is going to be our next one, but then we'll switch back to 7 o'clock in the new year. Okay. So and, we, and we do appreciate them being on the uh, TV 14 site as well. That's, I think that's been oh, very you. helpful to us. I do too, very much. thank you. Yes, and I wanna thank you for being with us because uh, without you watching, why would we do the show? That's so right. thank you again and thank you for watching. Until I see you next time, I'll be seeing you on the radio. Bye-bye.